Why the visit of King Charles III has angered the Kipsigis community? It is said that during the pre-colonial era, the British government forcibly took their land. Though it was a Commonwealth country, there may have been excitement when word leaked out about King Charles III's intended visit to Kenya. Welcome to Royal Pancakes. Please don't forget to subscribe and click the notifications bell, so you don't miss any updates about the British royal family. This isn't the case, though, for the Kipsigis community, who have made a protracted trek to seek reimbursement from the British government for their forcible removal from their lands. When Kenya became a British protectorate in 1895, the British government is said to have forcibly taken the lands during the pre-colonial era. It created land laws and rules that discriminated against native African communities, such as the Kipsigis, and benefited them. Years after the pursuit of justice started, leaders have made numerous attempts through petitions and lawsuits to get the country to apologize in public and pay compensation to families, but these efforts have been fruitless. The Kipsigis Community Clans Organization, Kipsigis Talai Clan, Boroo, and Kipsigis Self-Help Group filed a petition with Kericho County in 2014. Senator Aaron Chariot of Kericho filed a petition with the Senate at the beginning of this year asking for the repeal of all land laws and rules implemented by the British colonial government. Formerly owned by Unilever T. Kenya, James Finley Kenya, George Williamson, Sotik T, Sotik Highlands, Kesugu T, Mao T, Koro, and Fort Tenon, both in Bomet and Kericho, are among the ancestral lands that the white settlers are said to have forcibly taken. Despite this, Kenya and the UK have maintained their cordial historical ties, which stretch back to the 19th century. It will bring back memories of a place where his late mother, Queen Elizabeth, used to reside before taking the throne after her father's death, making King Charles III's visit emotional. It'll be his first trip there as a king, though it will be his fifth overall. Regarding the community, though, hope is limited. We value the chance to deepen the friendship and collaboration between our two countries, but we also think it's critical to confront past wrongs and promote a spirit of peace between the Kenyan and British people. Peter Bett stated. Bett has also blasted the organizers in a statement for leaving out the topic of historical injustices from the schedule. The communities are still affected by the issue of land evictions and brutality that occurred during that time, he claimed. We humbly request elucidation and comprehension as to why the state visit program does not involve gatherings or conversations with these impacted communities, he declared. Given the long-standing historical ties between Kenya and the UK, he said, it would only make sense to address the grievances during the visit through a constructive dialogue, as this is a crucial step towards mutual understanding and reconciliation.